Okay. Here we go. Come on. Hello, everybody. Am I live? Are you receiving me loud and clear? Good evening to you all, and welcome to this, uh, once again, very, very impromptu, um, totally not um, spirit of the moment stream. Going to leave this on whilst I do some homework in the background. That is the best place uh, for me to be enjoyed. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, wow, we got a bunch of people coming in. We've got a bunch of new Power of the Doctor details. It is indeed one week away, and it seems now that they've just decided, you know what? Let's just drop a bunch of stuff. I apologise if my hair looks wet. Uh, for context, I uh, went to go see a friend at uni, and uh, my chair broke down in the pouring rain. So, um, that was fun. Um, also, I went into town. Shout-outs to the guy who recognised me in HMV and said he liked my content. That really made my day today. But yes, hello to everyone in the chat. It's my 18th on Tuesday. Well, happy birthday to you on Tuesday. I uh, hope you have a great day. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Oh, new stuff since when? Just now. Just dropped. We got images, interviews, BBC, all of that. Tell me how I predicted you're about to go live right now. Because news is out, and that's my that's what I do, I guess. 11 on the calendar in the background, yes, because it's uh, the each month it's a different one. Right now it's it's 11, then it'll be 12 in November, 13 in Fugitive in December. Uh, what it comes to my birthday? Depends where it is. Uh, I probably won't travel internationally for it, I'll be honest. Um, uh, hello, there is love your content, been up for a while, you're my go-to for Doctor News. Thank you. Right, should we get into said news, shall we? Also, by the way, quick thing, quick addendum, um, <coughs> I hit 16,000 subscribers uh, last night, and then it went back down, so I feel really bad putting out like a, oh, thanks for 16,000 subscribers, and then it went back down, but yeah, that's fine, it's quite funny, but if you aren't subscribed and you do enjoy Doctor New News content, I cover it all, so... Feel free to subscribe at any point throughout the stream. Greatly appreciated. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just thought it was quite funny that uh, we, we made it and then it uh, went down again. But let's get into some of the new images. So most of these have been posted to the Doctor Who Twitter accounts as well as TV Zone have also posted some additional ones. So I'll use the ones, I'll use the Twitter first. So we got this tweet saying, uh, welcome to the end of your existence. Power of the Doctor, 23rd of the 10th, 2022. I jokingly said have I, have I missed a few days because I this looked like the same port format that they've done the previous um, countdown tweets in where each day they've been posting a new episode. And you'd think that this would be the end one, but no, this is just the one they've done today. So yeah, looking at some of the details of the images, this image seems to be the actual shot that we're going to see um, that we saw being filmed in Cardiff back in July. Uh, I'll see if I can find the person who put the original setup for this shot um, on Twitter in a moment. But yeah, see, this looks to be a very sort of um, end of time, climactic, looking out at the hardest one last time shot. I think in this scene as well, she speaks to Yaz. So my guess here would be this is the last sort of moment, the last um, interaction before she, she goes and dies, I guess. Um, and then the next one, we have uh, Yaz looking very disturbed. I've noticed as well with the uh, the lighting in this special that the TARDIS is looking very red. Perhaps that's alluding to uh, the fact that the Master has a TARDIS. Also, thank you to Freddie Staper for the one pound super chat. Huge thank you for that. Very much appreciate it. If you want a super chat, feel free. Thank you very much for that. Um, let me get back to the images. So yeah, we got this one of Yaz looking very perturbed. I'm reckoning this is in the Masters like clone TARDIS because that was alluded to in the previous trailer. So uh, that one's really interesting. And then we have this one. Now this one I think has probably got the most to glean from. Um, the Master is sat at a, almost like a school desk um, in his uh, outfit that we've seen him wearing during the episode. Um, and you can sort of see he's in a full-on suit and everything, um, as he was. And you can sort of see behind him, the volcano is um, on a chalkboard, as well as a bunch of pictures of the volcano on his, like, I don't know, I guess, clipboard? Um, not clipboard, like, what's that thing you'd call, just like a board that he's clipped stuff to? Anyway, you can also see notes as well. So that implies the, um, the seismologist going missing and all the happenings in the volcano 
are resulting in the master. My kind of prevalent theory was that um, the Daleks were perhaps excavating it for some purpose. As we see in the last trailer, like they, they have it, this weird um, drilly system, which I thought they were... To be fair, we do see in the trailer, which I will get to in the uh, little um, end of era trailer that they've presented, one new shot, which does seem to depict a, some form of alliance, which is interesting in and of itself. But yeah, this shot is probably the most interesting to me out of the bunch. It definitely seems like he's result he's responsible for the seismologists going missing that I mentioned in the trailer. And then the final one, we actually get a decent shot of um, the Lone Cyberman Ashad at uh, Unit HQ. I think it was said, or maybe I'm imagining this, I think it was said he wants revenge on the Master, or something to that effect. He does look slightly different. It's at least changed design slightly. I swear that this looked a bit like slightly different colour. Maybe it was the lighting, to be fair. That could also be a trick. It's nice to see him without, like, a, you know, a bunch of um, different lighting on him, just as he is, you know, in neutral lighting. Um, that's quite nice. I've always thought the Ash outside man design was really cool, to be fair. I will be interested to see how he gets untissue compre un compression eliminated, unless it is something to do with time travel or something to that effect. Um, and then going into the TV Zone article, um, we have a few more. Um, let me just... Uh, See if, because I know that there's a full-on interview, um, BBC tease uh, about the paintings, um, and then if there's a full-on, like, interview later on, um, which I think is in a, a separate article. But yeah, the other images are, so we've seen this one, um, seen that one, seen that one, seen that one. We get some new images of the Daleks, uh, finally, with their, with their um, original stick and plunger combo. They look really nice, to be fair. I think the way they're shot here looks really nice. I'll get a zoom in on it for you. Because um, I tried to click into the image and it just wouldn't click for some reason. So I'm just going to zoom in for you guys. Uh, thank you to TV Zone for DMing this to me as well. So that uh, I, I get to show it to you guys as, as soon as I got it. Literally, I was finishing... I was like, literally, I just ordered food. Because I just got in for, for a day out. And I was like, oh, there's, there's new centenary stuff. Well, guess I'm live streaming after this. Uh, yeah, so we got the Daleks in that. What I assume to be the volcano as well, uh, you can sort of see stone there, which again kind of adds to my theory of it being excavated for some nefarious purpose. And then we get this other shot, which seems to take place in the same location. Uh, that's Jodie looking shocked by her TARDIS, which I assume is a shot that's like her reacting to what the Daleks are doing, slash master, slash whoever. Um, so yeah, those are all the new shots uh, I've managed to be able to um, identify. Uh, here. We've also got interviews with, like, the entire cast that the BBC have just released. Uh, just, you know, they've just... It, it's super weird. Like, the BBC strategy is, right, basically, we'll get, like, nothing for ages, and then they'll just drop everything all in one go. Does he still have the death particle inside of that? That is a good question, and my honest answer is, I do not know. Darius, did you see the blink and you miss it eye shot in the trailer? That eye shot is from the Simon's Children, I believe. Someone did break it down, but... There is um, one new shot in the trailer with uh, the Rasputin looking master. Could the Daleks be working with the master? That's what we're going to be getting to. So um, I guess I'll actually talk about that one now. Hold on. Who posted the, the one new image that's actually in the trailer? Save. I think it might be Space Space 2. Uh, because I'll show the whole trailer later, provided I don't get claimed, which is also a possibility. Um, um, can you guys see? No, you can't. Yeah, you will be able to, though. When I deem it so. Also, hello to Moose Axon, who's in the chat. Um, you can tell it's a very manic day. But yeah, this is the new shot. So in the new shot, you can seem to see uh, the Dewan Master, what appears to be either two Cybermen or Cybermasters, and a Dalek. So I would hazard a guess, just be guessing here, that there's some form of either an alliance, or like, <laughs> they're doing the dimension in time thing where he's um, managed to create a menagerie of uh, various Doctor Who villains, I guess. Um, I have to be honest, I don't know what would be in it for the Daleks to team up with the Master. I guess maybe if his ultimate plan is to erase the Doctor, then they'd be like, yeah, we'll, we'll join him with that. But I can't see them being loyal to his plan. You know, I feel like they'd be having his own, their own plan. But that's an interesting shot as well. That's the one new shot in the trailer, which I'll, I'll show you in its full later on, provided, once again, you know... I mean, I might get claimed, I don't know. It's two minutes long, so I might. 
I may or may not show that <laughs> just in case. But yeah, that's the new shot anyway. And then, yeah, so getting into the interviews, I guess. Uh, let me just check you guys could see. Um, so it was, someone said 15 paintings, 15 doctors, including uh, War and Back Crisis. I mean, seems like a bit of a stretch, but I mean, it's not possible. Um, eek, yeah. We will get a final trailer before the episode comes out. Will we get a final? I think the one that they released that's like the end of era trailer will be the last one. Um, probs, they will end up killing the master. I mean, maybe. Uh, possibly. They could do anything at this stage. Okay, but getting into the actual articles, because there's a lot of interesting articles and stuff as well. Um, so. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, Doctor Who's at the power of the Doctor Who, yeah, making sure you can see. Um, also, there's 180 of you in the stream. If you could feel free to like, uh, that'd be greatly appreciated. Let's get to 100 likes right now. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Do it. Fly. As like, you know, like a witch of the West. Just like, um, yeah, thanks for that. Anyway, um... So, in a feature-length special to mark her last adventure, Jodie Wick's 13th Doctor must fight for her very existence against her deadliest enemies, the Daleks, the Cybermen, and her arch-nemesis, the Master. I feel like the Daleks might have something to say about that final phrase, but I digress. Who is attacking a speeding bullet train at the edge of a distant galaxy? Why are seismologists going it missing from 21st century Earth? Who is defacing some of the world's most iconic paintings? Why is the Dalek trying to contact the Doctor? And just what hold does the uh, the mesmeric Rasputin have over Star Nicholas in 1916 Russia? Very long synopsis. We've heard that one before. And then we get a new quote from Chris Jibble saying, There'll be laughter, there'll be huge jeopardy, and there will be tears at the departure of the 13th Doctor. It's the biggest threat the Doctor has ever faced, that any Doctor has ever faced, big words, uh, to, their, to their life or lives. Can you tell the audience what to expect from the special? You can expect a massive all-action thrill ride from start to finish. There will be laughter, there will be huge jeopardy, and there will be tears at the departure of the 13th Doctor. It's the threat that it's the biggest that the Doctor's face, any any Doctor's face. Yeah, we had that bit. Uh, can you talk a bit about the process in putting together the feature-length episode? What did you finally set out to achieve? It's a particularly unique brief and a particularly unique episode because it's a regeneration episode, but it's also a celebration of the BBC centenary and Doctor Who's place within the BBC. So I really wanted to ensure that it had a sufficient scale, but also that it was connected into the past, present, and future of Doctor Who. We're bringing back characters like Tegan and Ace, and there are also lots of Easter eggs, some visual, some verbal. Uh, some are also deeply buried that only few will recognise them. But there are so many references to the past of Doctor Who, uh, that it's going to be a crazy movie-length identity uh, for, for all the BBC centenary, whilst also saying goodbye to a very beloved Doctor. And we've got some exciting returns, returnees, such as Sasha Devon, Sophie Aldred, and Janet Fielding. How, how, how was it having those conversations? And then he says, uh, one, of those great, one of the greatest joys are always the phone calls to, to people who've been in the show or who might want to be in the show and telling them that you think the story is how it's going to play out, and asking them back. So the call to Janet and Sophie were wonderful, and they were extremely emotional. Uh, they were amazing and thrilled, and throughout the whole process have been extraordinary. Uh, it's important to take a moment to praise their sheer bravery and guts to come back to something you've not done for 20 or 30 years is incredible. To step onto a set where you uh, don't know anybody, but to be going back to a world that you thought you'd left behind is really extraordinary. And there are so many amazing, and there are so, they are so amazing in this episode. It's a delight to see them. It's the modern Doctor Who, so that was fantastic. We talked uh, about where we were collectively through their characters. Um, thought their character. Uh, we we talked about where we collectively thought their characters would be. Now, I really wanted them to feel comfortable with what had happened and the gap between we'd last see them uh, with those characters on screen and where we met them here. It's slightly sketched in, but it's really important. Uh, for them as performance, and for those characters. So yeah, we will get confirmation, I, I guess. I guess this confirms, like, you know, we're going to get some level of confirmation of what's happened to Ace and Tegan, like, since we've been seeing them, because I think that was a question that a lot of people are going to have. You know, how what are they going to do for Ace and Tegan in the, in the middle, you know, in between? Um, oh, I don't do it. I was visiting someone at uni, but yeah, no, I wasn't at uni myself. Um, yeah, 
Uh, Neon Headlights gives a two pound super chat. Weird about the subs, but we're still here. Yeah, it was really weird. I have to assume a bunch of bots subscribed and then mass unsubscribed, I guess. But yeah, if you uh, are new and you'd like to subscribe, feel free. Could the other planet be Talos? Possibly? I don't know. I feel like if it's the Doctor's memories, if it's the Doctor being erased, then it could be like another version of it. I'm not sure. Like, I would say it would be Gallifrey, but that's not her, like, original planet anymore, I guess, so it probably wouldn't be there. Let me just uh, double-check something real quick, and then we'll go back to the interview. Cool, cool. Okay. Um, where's the interview gone? There it is. Uh, do, do, do. do you always want to bring back companions from... Did you always want to bring back companions from the past? It was more to do with them being asked to do a centenary special that I thought there had to be something from the past that felt strong, unique, and different to what else was done during Jodie's time as the Doctor. So it was a brilliant opportunity. And as soon as we knew we were doing that, that was one of the things I wanted to do. Those characters and, and those actors came to mind as I think they're representative of certain times in the show's history, and they're both incredibly strong and vibrant characters. Uh, there are so many to pick and choose from, uh, and in a way, you want to do them all, but actually, I had to just pick two. And what both of them said separately was, oh, I think Tegan would get on well with Ace, and then, oh, I think Ace would really get on well with Tegan. Okay, interesting. So, like, they, they kind of suggested those two teaming up. That's an interesting, it's an interesting reasoning. I'm interested in that. With Sasha, it was a long-term plan that we had spoken about when he was last on the show. The end of season 12, I had a conversation with him knowing that he would be doing Jodie's final episode at the end of the following season. The big conversation was about uh, coming back for her finale because it had always been uh, felt like his master and Jodie's doctor uh, instantly had that chemistry and that it would be a really fitting last battle. Sorry if it takes me a while to read through it all because, uh, you know, I'm just very tired. It took a lot of planning and obviously then there was a disruption by the pandemic so we held out through everything. Through all the storms, obviously he's incredibly in demand and he was also about to fil filming The Great, which is a great show by the way, I would recommend. But we made it work in the end. He made it happen and we're just thrilled because that was the plan all along. He, was re he has rewarded everyone with the most incredible performance in this episode. We have a focus on villains. We have a focus on villains. Vill villains. Villains. We have a focus on villains in this episode. Was it hard to keep a balance of good and evil? Will it be a dark episode? I would say it's a fast, lively, and exciting episode. Yeah, fast is an interesting choice of words because that makes me think how quickly are we going to be flashing through some of these things? But I digress. Uh, what you have is the three villains is separate plans. Wait. Okay. 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 So you you tell you telling me real quick the Daleks, the Cybermen, and the Master, according to this, have three separate individual plans. That's a lot. Um, I was kind of thinking that it was um, what you call it, like they were going to combine plans. But if they got separate plans, ooh, that's interesting. Uh, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, with separate plans and on multiple fronts, and it's incredibly overwhelming. She's running from pillar to post to try and sort out all these things. And again, it was something I had in my mind for a long time, that it would be lovely to do the axis of evil. The triumvirate of evil in Jodie's final episode. We hadn't done those, and I really wanted to hold that back for her finale. The scale in this episode is huge. Apart from the obvious COVID challenges, were there any other challenges faced during the process? Every sequence is massive, so even the pre-credits which is the longest pre-credits we've ever done, is like a mini-movie in itself. Okay, so there's going to be a long pre-credits. That's interesting. And this episode has more visual effects than any episode in Doctor Who history. It was a huge demand on the visual effects team. There is a lot of action. There are a lot of locations. There are a lot of monsters. There are a lot of things exploding. Really, from the get-go, it had to feel constantly on the move, constantly exciting, and I think it does. It was a lot of work and a lot of uh, brilliant directing by Jamie Wagner Stone, I do like Shane Baggerston as a director, who I think is a real talent and has an incredible ability uh, to coral both the emotions and the action and the scares and the humour. I think he's done an extraordinary job. How was it writing the Doctor's final scenes, and did you see them filmed? Writing it, I always knew we were going, to, um, we were going, so I knew that 
what I, I knew. So I knew what I was writing towards. Uh, I knew what the final words were going to be. Yeah, this is the second time we've heard 13's final words referenced in these interviews. Jodie herself says she really likes her final words. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see what they're going to be. And where everything was going to happen and finish. So I wrote those quite early on and sort of put them to one side. I was on the set for the final day shoot. There were a lot of people on set and there was a pouring of love. It was a very special and very fun-filled day. There was a lot of music being played. Jodie put on playlists. There's a real sort of party atmosphere on the final day. And I have to say, the last few days, we had a shooting. Uh, we had or, uh, we had of shooting, I guess that's supposed to be. We're just delightful. And particularly after coming through quite a challenging year of filming, it felt like everything had landed in the right place. The production team had done a great job in scheduling the final scenes of that Doctor uh, as the final scenes we were going to do to film, which isn't always the case. And it felt very appropriate, very right, very lovely. It didn't feel like a sad day. It felt like a very happy day. A sense of love, of the job well done. And there was so much love for Jodie and Mandip. Um, so yeah, this is, a, this is a long interview, but there's also interviews with everyone else. So stay tuned, because uh, there's a lot to go over. There's a lot to go over here, so uh, yeah. Uh, what do you think Jodie's biggest impact has been during her time as the Doctor? I always just find these interviews really interesting, because, you know, I love to pick showrunners' brains, you know? Not like in a, in a horrific way, but in like a, I want to know what their what their like thought process are. Uh, she's changed the game. She's changed history in terms of Doctor Who. I think she's really uh, brought is a Doctor who is full of hope and positivity and generosity. I think in time she really need that. I think she showed off her incredible sort of clowning side, humor that she can do, which maybe some people didn't know her for beforehand. I think she's enriched the character of the Doctor, as all actors who play the Doctor do. But it's an incredibly bold and brave performance. And she took responsibility for the Doctor being a woman. She took it on her shoulders and represented that uh, that was not a given. That was her strength and decision and power. I think she has been utterly magnificent. She exceeded all our expectations. She's given a whole generation of young girls uh, and, and women a chance to feel that they are the Doctor also. And that was always the purpose from the start of the era. Was to, um, was to really widen the net. Uh, if you could pick two or three favourite episodes, what would they be? That's an interesting one. I'd have to have a really long think, but it's definitely more than two or three. The ones that I really love, um, looking back with things like Spyfall, Razor, Demons of the Punjab, Kablam, Fugitive of the Jadoon, Ascension of the Sidemen, War of the Centaurans, Village of the Angels, and Eve of the Daleks. But actually, there are loads that I really love and I'm really proud of. I think it's impossible to choose one uh, um, because Different days will feel different things. There's quite a range in there, from out and out comedy to really serious drama and action in between. I felt like we really tried to make the most of the range in stories. The whole experience is very hard to break down into components once you're at the end. Yeah, this is a, a very interesting interview. What are you most proud of during the time of the show, and what will you miss most about Doctor Who? It's really hard uh, to talk about what you're proud of. I like the range of stories and the variety of stories. There's a lot to be proud of. The first woman doctor, a lot more women writing and directing the show, and a more diverse cast of writers on the sh uh, and directors on the show. That was the mission statement at the start for me. That's what I wanted to do and what we came in. And as I look at it now, in terms of the run we've had, I think we absolutely delivered on that. That was really important. I'm proud of that. But there's just certain stories that I think we really landed that way. I think the thing I'll miss most about the madness of making the show, because you could be the design for a, you could be uh, shown the design for a monster one minute, then you're in 1950s America. The next moment you're getting in the rushes, you get to do things on Doctor Who you can't do anywhere else, and the visual effects team are amazing. Uh, did you take any mementos from the set? Okay, that's an interesting question. Uh, hopefully everyone's doing okay. What was your favourite episode of Doctor Who? I have a lot. Um, New Who, it's probably like maybe like Turn Left, or um, Doctor's Wife, or Evie's Choice, or you know, the Human Age 2 part, and then like Classic Who, you maybe like Two of the Cybermen, Remembrance, uh, Pyramids of Mars, the 70. I don't think it's back to front, I think it's just the camera, maybe. Uh, when you analyze, it'll be very interesting to dissect. That's not all I meant, I meant in terms of. You know, thought process. Um, Pre-credits will probably be the bullet train content. That's a good shout, to be fair. That could very well be the case, yeah. 
Uh, yes, I have a roundel of the TARDIS, quite a few of us do. I have a few little gifts that I was given. A front plate of the TARDIS, the plaque on the front. I didn't take a lot because I had a lot from the past couple of years. Weirdly, the thing that you take the most memories uh, are the me uh, the thing that you take most are the memories. You kind of can't explain those. Um, the the that sounds really sentimental, but it's really true. It's not the objects; it's the experiences and the people. This is also the end of Yaz's journey. What can we expect? It's a big episode for Yaz, and it's the last chapter in her story. And there is a lot of things she has to deal with in this story. I really wanted to feel. I really wanted it to feel big for Yaz as an episode, and I think it really does. Mandip, there are not enough words to describe in any language how extraordinary Mandip is and how brilliant she has been for the show. She is an amazing actor, she is one of the greatest human beings, she is so smart, so funny, so kind, and everyone in the television industry should be queuing up to have her in the lead of their next series because she's such a huge talent and an amazing person. I cannot speak highly enough of her. We uh, really lucked out when casting her because, you know, um... You never know, and have ha, and, and to have her on for as long as the whole of Jodie's era, she is as defining of it as Jodie is. The journey that the character has gone on, it's so broad, my admiration for Mandip is unlimited. Um, that's interesting, because we don't really get an answer other than it's a big episode, but yeah, fair enough. I'm excited about the next era and being a viewer again. Um, I'm really looking forward to not knowing anything. I'm already enjoying it, and in fact... I had to say to Russell on a few occasions, please don't tell me. I'm lucky enough to have seen the full ending of Paradoctor, and even and even the tiny bit at the end that made me thrilled uh, about and excited and desperate to see more about what comes next. It's a delightful prospect. David Tennant's coming back, I'm calling it now. The way everyone's talking about it, it has to be that, right? The pre credit scene is so long because it handles Dan exit. Dan's exit, he, ne he leaves due to his disappointment that he's never able to utilize his blaster exiles on adventures. To be fair, I could see that though. I could see the pre credits, like an early adventure, being what makes him decide to leave. All jokes aside, I could see that being a thing. Also, um, just to double check, uh, just to double check, I think we're once again, um, after the, the glitch in subscribers, we are about um, 18 subscribers away <laughs> from 16,000. So if you haven't subscribed, Get you know, get your pet to subscribe, your man, feel free. Let's get back up there and stay back up there, shall we? That would be great. But yeah, let's carry on with the interview. So um, so then he says, can you tease what's coming next for you? That's the great thing about now is that I don't have to tease anything. Laughs. I'm doing a lot of different projects. I'm doing stage projects, quite a lot of TV activity, and we'll see where that goes. But I'm having a lot of fun doing very different things. There you go. That's the final interview with Chris Chibnall, current Doctor Who show. Runner. Interview with Jodie Whittaker. Can you tell us what the audience expect from your final big special? I'd say that the Whovians are in for an absolute treat. We celebrate the old, the present, the new. It's a wonderful homage to the legacy of Doctor Who has had. It encapsulates the things the fans love in Doctor Who, whether it be old monsters, returning characters, and new elements. Everything that unites Whovians in this episode. If you haven't seen Doctor Who before this special, you will be sure to... Um, we'll be sure to hook you in for your new Doctor your new doctor interesting choice of words what is was it exciting to be part of the bbc celebrations um it is i love the bbc it's a huge part of the fabric of our industry doctor is a huge part of that being part of a show that is so iconic in the bbc i'm very passionate about for this episode to come out as a real celebration as a young kid tv shows i watched uh, led me to this now all the drama comedies and the hundred years of the path that has laid uh that has led to my casting um it's a huge episode for the villains. It's the first time we see the Cybermen, the Masters, and the Daleks all in one. How has it been working with Sasha again? Uh, I love Sasha. He's an incredible, amazing actor and a phenomenal force of nature on set. His detail and level of commitment to the Master is inspiring. But in that, he's also a team player. He turns up to the crew, and I he turns up the crew, and I love him. Cast love him because he's a really good laugh. And the complete opposite, um, on, on and on screen, you absolutely believe everything that comes out of his mouth. If you find him in real life, he's such a nice guy. So to be as convincing as that as the master, hats off. All his choices I love. All my favourite scenes throughout my tenure have been with Sasha. So being told um, he would be part of my final episode was an absolute joy for me. I don't feel it would have served my doctor not to have that moment of resolution and heartbreak with him. Uh, how tense are those scenes? What I love about Sasha's master, and what I think is important, is that he's so broken, actually, it's not just two-dimensional evil. 
It's so many layers, there's such a vulnerability to it. It makes things so much more complicated for the Doctor that he cannot let the Doctor survive is the most heartbreaking thing. Our last scenes were shot in order, which we never usually do, so it had some build-up. Um, so yeah, there's, a, ooh, there's loads of questions here. Um, yeah, also if you like the stream, feel free to like the, like the video. Dad's X would be like, Liverpool self-explodes. Uh, do you think uh, we'll see Shooty in the Centenary episode, not just in the regeneration at the end, if that happens, but actually in the episode, a bit like Pally's eyebrows? Well, you mean the Centenary or the 60th? Because Centenary, I doubt it. 60th, I think we will. I don't think we'll see just David Tennant's eyebrow. The way they're all talking about it, I think we're going to see it. Uh, I think it would be brilliant to have a normal regeneration where she becomes Gatwa, then suddenly, boom, B becomes Whitaker again, then flashes back uh, through uh, the other Doctors landing on Tennant. That would be a really fun scene, and I kind of want it, but I don't know whether they'd get Capaldi back even for that, to be honest. I just don't get the vibe he really wants to come back even for anything, if, if I'm being 100%. I would love a scene like that, though. Um, absolutely. Oh wow, we're like, okay, we're now five subscribers away from 16,000 again. Let's get there again. Let's do it. We're, we're repeating it. We're doing it again. In the words of in the words of SpongeBob SquarePants, you want to see me do it again? Uh, anyway, um, can, you, and so this, can you tell us about this final suit? Oh wait, so how are the stunts these time? Uh, Stunts-wise, the opening sequences were really fun. Uh, they involved a lot of us um, on different competence levels. You've got Dan falling out the TARDIS but then smashing his landing. Okay, so that gives context to the earlier trailer shot, where it's like, what a landing, 9.9! 9. Um, there are a lot of iconic costumes that even the fandom who haven't um, even seen the episode are recreating. Something at Comic-Con turned up in my orange spacesuit astronaut costume. There are... The fact it says multiple iconic costumes, actually, I want to pause to say that. That makes me think... That, that rumor from a while back about um, the idea of Jodie cycling through um, old costumes, like it, that makes it sound a bit more legitimate because it doesn't make it sound like it's just the one, the one costume, right? It makes it sound like it's multiple. Oh, just quick flashes using CGI. Yeah, I guess that could work. I uh, like how they did more to Ninth Doctor. Yeah, that'd be good. Although I always find I, I always wish that Christopher Eccleston had been at the end, but yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Uh, big finish of the time war, Gaz. I don't know what that context is, but I agree. <laughs> um, okay, what was the what was I looking at? Yeah, it says like multiple costumes. Like she, she says, there are lots of iconic costumes that even the fandom are creating who haven't seen the episode. So that makes me think multiple. There are so many brilliant moments for us. There's a lot of playfulness. There's a massive stunt that I'm not allowed to, uh, that that I wasn't allowed to film. Where Sasha yanks the Doctor back. That was Linda, my double. Sometimes I'm gutted I'm not allowed to do things, but I did miss out on being dragged over a quarry. I was fine with that. This is a really extensive interview for like a Chibnall era story. Like they normally don't give us this many details, but they're giving us details of actual scenes, which is a, which is kind of a rarity, which is which is interesting. Um. Have you ever watched Breaking Bad? I'm going to be honest, I haven't watched it properly yet. It's like on my list. I'm, I'm working my way through. I, start, I just started Happy Valley with um, Rebecca TV. And um, I'm just finishing up Haunting a Blind Manor with JXE. So I'm just, I've been watching, I'm, I'm catching up on a lot of TV. Because ironically, despite the fact that I constantly talk about TV, that means I don't have a lot of time to actually watch said TV. Um, so yeah. Um... We did loads of work for walking on the roof of the train. There were lots. The, the suits were hot, and we had to have fans pumped in, but they had to be turned off in the scenes that would steam up. So you had a lot of critical moment where they'd scream "film," and then they'd come up and go, um, and then come up and you go. It's not as easy as it looks. Can you tell us about the atmosphere on set during those final scenes? So, like a lot of questions about the final scenes, uh, which makes sense because it's massive. Uh, everyone was wonderful. On the last day, um, there... Well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do something a bit different. Since this is, you know, one of the final big news streams, um, now that, you know, we're in our final, um, 
you know, what to call it, final few days of the 13th Doctor, I think it's time for a lighting change. Hang on. That's going to be more dramatic, but it's not very dramatic, is it? There we are. Look at that. I'm regenerating now. Would recommend Breaking Bad. Yeah, I've heard good things. I need to get around to it. Hi. Anyway, we um, we have regeneration yellow. Um, someone edit me regenerating, please. But anyway. Um, um, so yeah, the atmosphere in the final scenes. Everyone was wonderful. On my last day, uh, there were scenes with Yaz and the Doctor on the TARDIS. But I got to do a bit more before. But, um, I got to, um, but I got a bit in before Mandip to start filming. I was wondering where everyone was, but they got me on set. We have the cast and crew lined up. Uh, where they clapped me, and I was obviously lost it there. Then we did it for Mandip, and I was crying more than her. Uh, Jen, who, uh, then Jen, who was our third AD, had stepped up in as the first AD in the last few days. She said, so this is the final time I'm going to haul rehearsal in the TARDIS, and I lost it. We shot everything nodding and making eye contact, and my bottom lip went, and I knew it was at the end. It was just the challenge of being able to articulate to everyone what you think of them. It's not just Mandip, not just the cast. It's all the phenomenal people you get to work with. It's lifelong friendships that I've forged for four years. We've had a lot of time in our lives and we survived the pandemic. Uh, at the beginning of our work, we had to separate. Um, we all had to separate. Then at the end, we could all be together. It felt particularly emotional because of where we were at. Um, also, yeah, hopefully the lighting's not too distracting. Uh, who would you like to see play the next incarnation of Thares? I don't think he has an extra body part to siphon energy into. No, that's true. You've been tangoed. Emergency, emergency, Thares is regenerating. <laughs> that's a bit of Time of the Doctor scene. By the way, my opinion, Time of the Doctor, best new Who regeneration story. I'll let that down now. I am actually going to rank them, so spoilers, but I think if you follow me on Twitter or you follow me for long enough, that was not going to be a particular surprise to you. Uh, and then what will you miss most about being the Doctor? Um, and she says, I'm not a method actor, I don't stay in character between scenes, but I spent a lot of the time before I played the Doctor doing quite emotionally traumatised roles. I played people who lost children, people who husbands have been disabled, things where characters were on the brink of uh, um, a lot of the time. They were major events that I can't understand. So a lot of the time, um, at work, you're always at the moment of devastation. A lot of time for me uh, was ma mainly uh, amazing and fun to do, but you're always on the brink of upset with Doctor Who. There were four seasons, uh, there were four seasons, there was heartbreak, there was fear, there was loss. My overriding emotion was excitement. I felt the override. wait, four seasons? Was there four? Well, I mean, I guess if you count the specials, like, if you count the, like, the David Taylor specials before. Or maybe it is just a typo on their part, I'm not sure. Uh, but my overriding emotion was excitement. I felt um, the overriding thing that Doctor brought was always curiosity and excitement. Obviously, fear and rage and all those rage and all those things. But the thing that really encapsulated my Doctor the most was that bouncing into things. And that really fed into my evening and my weekend and my year. I was very half full all day, every day. So it bleeds into life. It's not someone who sits in character all weekend, but you do realise how much uh, that emotional trauma leaves you on the edge of being upset when you've only been when you've been doing those twelve hour days. You don't quite let go of it at the end of the day without realising. So the reason I can't gush about this uh, much about this job is because it wasn't just happiness on set. It fed into everything. I feel like it knocked fifteen years off me because I've been so energised because I had to be at work that it fed outwards, and I'll miss the energy of the Doctor. Uh, what are you looking forward to about being a viewer of the next era? I'm really excited to not know any spoilers. There were two big events for me, knowing that O would turn out the Master, and that Hoobians would be like, oh my god, and that I'd dig up TARDIS, and that I'd turn around and Jim is the Doctor. Knowing that those things were coming in one season, and they hadn't been leaked, was the most fun. So now I get to know those things before they come out. So I can't wait to go, you kidding me. I cannot wait to see it in real time. I don't have the stress of keeping secrets. Uh, did you steal anything from set? I got my costume, Sonic, a Cyberman, 
Uh, when I fly the TARDIS, I flick a switch that spins the, the mini TARDIS light. <laughs> yeah, I love the I, I love the image. Side note, because that she's listing a lot of things. I'm loving like the image of like Jodie with just like a bag of swag. She's just you know like the Grinch in like How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It's just like that. <laughs> But yeah, just like, because it looks like she's got basically. Also, yeah, it says a Cyberman. So is that like an entire Cyberman? She's just taken over with it or just Ed? Uh, when I fled TARDIS, um, I got the the bit that spins, the mini TARDIS that lights up, so that pulls. Um, and then I pull the handle down. I've got that too. You and Mandip spend so much time together. What will you miss between the bond between the Doctor and Yaz? Uh, Mandip makes me laugh the way that nobody else does. I find her to be one of the most funniest people ever around. Mandip is inbuilt, full of energy, half full and const and really constant. Everyone loves being around her. Whenever we get on set, everyone gravitates towards her because she just is ace to be around. She has uh, perfect energy. On a selfish note, she makes me a better actor and a more level-headed person. So on a, on a um, selfish note, I feel like my, actor, my anchor has gone because she never runs out of chat. Which is my favourite thing. There's an unconditional love and sisterhood. It's unique when you find out find that later in life. I met her at 36. You don't think you've got the room at my age. Um, but not to not be around her every day has been hard and I've really missed it. But obviously we speak all the time. If you could pick uh, one scene from like your favourite in your whole time in the tenure. Um, what would it be? And then it says the scenes in Demons the Punjab. Uh, I love when we shot in Spain in the first season with Jamie Childs, who directed us at the beginning. Lots of very funny moments. Uh, yeah, Demons of the Fun Jab. Um, I think he, she says it's her favourite. I was like, what would be your tip for the next Doctor? And it says, this is yours for the taking. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice little... Wait, was it? Isn't there a new trailer coming? There is a new editor trailer, yeah. Wait, why did someone say, yo, Thary's... Oh, wait, no, it's, I thought it said, yo, Thary's owls. Like, what did I do? Thary's goes to Brazil. Yeah, this is my regeneration lighting. I feel like you'll need to, you know, respect the regeneration lighting. I'd love another fifth Doctor regeneration with the floaty heads. You know a regeneration I'd love them to do again? The second Doctors, where it's like a punishment. I think that'd be sick. Or... Lightning in the TV movie. That's such a unique aesthetic that they've never used again. Jody, oh, Jody will do big finish. I have no doubt in my head that that's happening. One hundred percent. Like that's not even that's not even a question in my head. She seems really like keen. Wait, hang on, I'm just reading something. Oh, interesting. That's an interesting quote from Mandip that we'll get to. I just read that um, in real time. I just discovered that. Terry says, Breaking Bad, Mexico Lightning. It's good to have transdimensional uh, pockets, yes. That makes me so happy. Which bit makes you happy? Hello, Cameron Jefferson. How are you doing, man? Also, yeah, um, let me just double check where we're at. Okay, yeah, we're, we're just, um, I think we're just like 10 subscribers off from uh, 16,000, so uh, feel free to keep subscribing, just to make sure we get there, that'd be very much appreciated. Um, and then we got the interview with Mandip Gill. Uh, can you tell us what audience can expect from the future Lex Centenary Special Effects? I expect uh, lots of jaw-dropping moments and amazing character interactions. When I first watched the episode, my mouth dropped, was wide open. It is fast paced and as expected, Chibnall has once again up the stakes in his special. It is a huge episode for the villains. Okay, basically the same question. How is it working with Sasha again? I love Sasha. It is amazing to work with one of my closest friends for obvious reasons, but to watch him as an actor, the work he does is a privilege to watch. Trust me, you'll see what I mean when you see it. Um, so yeah, it talks about um, Sophie Aldridge and Janet Fielding. Yes, we did. It's been really nice to be working with people who love the show as much as the current cast and both have so much energy and plenty of stories from their time which helped pass time during filming. It was also really exciting trying to keep them both a secret whilst filming. The trailer looks action-packed. Can you tell us about any stunts we could expect? First, Firstly, I do all my own. So remember that 
when you see me flying in the air holding on to my dear life. That was re really hard and all for me. Seriously, it was really fun but taxing. The ropes are tight and it's difficult to wear the, in the helmets. I'm guessing this is the first scene again. And um, climbing the ladder was also difficult. It was wobbling everywhere, so you look like sheer panic. I'm not sure what the ladder's in reference to. Um, however, it was always fun to read a script where you see a stunt written. You know it's going to be a fun few days on set. Uh, can you tell us about any fun moments with the team during filming? Uh, those, space, those space suits look comfy. The suit itself was very comfortable, but we had a huge space in the helmets. Uh, that air pumped into them, and I was apprehensive to put it on at first, and I was scared that the air supply would stop, but the team were amazing, and I would take them off if I needed it. Diane Humphreys, our sound mixer, kindly played Dave the Rapper into my helmet so I could have a little dance and rap along. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, can you tell us a bit about your final scenes? Uh, filming the final scenes was emotional, as to be expected. The executive producers... Um, on the floor at the atmosphere was beautiful and naturally Jody and I had some real emotions flowing uh, it will be something I will remember for the rest of my days as we know it's the end of a beautiful chapter you and Jody have been amazing on an amazing journey together do you hope to share screen time again um, so yeah absolutely we think of ideas and it usually ends up the both of us being very Norman being very northern and attached to the police force somehow I don't know what the context of that line is. Um, yeah, that's a very weird line for me. Maybe because, like, Yaz plays a cop, and does, like, Jody play a cop in um, Attack the Block or something? What is the context for that line? Because that's the line that I saw people posting and was like, what? It's like, it's really weird. That's a really weird line. I'm guessing it's just because maybe they both played cops before, but yeah, I'm, I'm just... I would love to work with her again or something completely different, even a different genre. I'm so fortunate to have found a best friend in her. The past four years have been amazing and so easy as quickly uh, became inseparable. We've had the fortune. We've been fortunate to have some of the world together too. Seeds of the world together too. It would be amazing if, um, if you could go back and film an episode again, which one would it be and why? So, it says actually the first episode, basically to you know, film the first scene all over again, just so we be able to enjoy it a tiny bit more. Um, who have been your favourite guest artists over the years? Kevin McNally, um, Crystal Yu, Joanna Barra, today with you. Are just some of the reasons why working on the show has been a highlight of my career so far, getting to meet so many amazing, talented friends is a wonderful feeling. What will you miss most about Doctor Who and what are you most proud of? I miss Carly from the crew back there, but Carly is great. Uh, they work <laughs> they work so hard and are truly like a family. I can't emphasize how enjoyable the time has been on Doctor Who. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to leave that bit there. Did you take anything from set? Uh, we've heard a few things about missing. So I definitely heard uh, someone say we can take stuff. As soon as we heard that, the TARDIS was dismantled in seconds. Yeah, I heard that. I took a sphere that was glued down, but uh, the help of the runners was soon in my possession and hidden away from anyone who thought they could steal it from me. Then we heard they still had scenes in the TARDIS to film. Imagine my face, because I am not naughty. Are you excited for the next era? I am so excited. It'll be really interesting to see where stories go. I know some of our episodes were very specific to my heritage, Demons of the Punjab, and Toes and Coals in Rosa. So it'll be interesting to see theirs. Also, uh, to see them up against new returning monsters will be fun to watch. Uh, how is it knowing you'll be part of the um, centenary celebrations? And it's, uh, it's, uh, um, like it's, it's, it's hugely iconic. Basically, what Jody said. Uh, I'm going to like try to start summarizing this now because this is such a long, a long press statement, and I don't want to keep us here for like you know four hours. Um, no, I don't mean Brawl Church. I mean like attack the block. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the ref, what what that line was referencing. Ma make it some Christmas cakes. Oh, I look forward. To, I say I look forward to eating them. I'm not going to the house, but I, I hope they're nice. Is probably what I was trying to say. Um, <laughs> don't know what what why that came into my immediate, my, my immediate thought. Um, uh, let me have a look here. So then we got the interview with Sasha Dewans as the master. It says. Um, so we got the interview with Sasha Dwan, interview with John Bishop, and then the interview with... Uh, wait, there's an interview... Wait. 
with Janet Fielding and then an interview with Sophie Aldred. And then that's it. Okay, so we got what? One, two, three, four interviews. Okay, well, I will skim the next four because <laughs> there's been a lot. Obviously, I don't want to keep you off too long, but um, how did you feel when you heard that you heard uh, pl uh, such a big part to play in the 13th final episode? I was really excited to be part of the 13th Rue special and Jodie's last episode, but I was also slightly nervous. You wanted to do the episode just for Jodie and the rest of the cast and for the fans. So there's a case of being excited to come back, but also wanting to offer the fans something different. I think that's something we've certainly achieved. Did you expect to return? I knew Chris Chibnall wanted to bring me back. We had an open and honest conversation, which was amazing. It was like a wish list. He asked me, if you were to come back, oh yeah, no, this was basically the same thing that was said in Doctor Magazine. So go watch my coverage on that. Um, so yeah, he basically talks about how he likes the disguises, which we covered before. Is it hard to get back into the Master's skin every time? It always brings challenges. That's great because I'm always wanting to do something different with it. But I enjoy playing him. So even though it can be a bit terrifying at times, it's a good feeling to have. The Master is unlike any other character I've ever played because they're so rich and dynamic. You never quite know what you're going to get. And I relish leaning into that. I'm going to say this, right? And I know some people don't quite vibe with them. I really quite like Sasha Dewan as the master. I, there's some issues um, like with some of the characterization, but I really quite enjoy Sasha Dewan in the part. I don't know. I think I, it just clicks with me. Wait, someone just tagged me and so they got Twitter on. We'll double check that now. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's cool. That is a okay. Shout outs to shout outs to Ethan Cronin for making this uh, great regeneration edit. I love how you've done it so that, like everything's like exploding around me. That's wonderful. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I'm gonna give that a retweet. Shout outs to you. Um, so anyway, yes, the article. I wanted to show that, but thank you. Um, so yeah, it's basically it's like on a, like any other character, very rich and dynamic. Sophie Alden, you had a feeling have complimented your work. That's so nice of them. I'm a huge fan of both um, Janet Fielding and Sophie Aldridge. I'll just double check it now. Um, it's a huge part of their lives and I wanted to do justice for them. So when they were complimentary, it means more than just an actor complimenting your work. The feeling is certainly mutual and I think they do a fantastic job in the episode. What is it that makes you think the Master is such an iconic villain in Doctor Who's history? It's like the relationship between Moriarty and Sherlock Holmes. I think this is a similar sort of extracts from the magazine. But yeah, the, I made this comparison before. In fact, I was going to make it in a video I was planning on the Master, which I probably will still make eventually. The Master gets to do things the Doctor just can't do. You can either wipe out his existence and he'll find a way to come back with a vengeance. He's also a character you love to hate. There's always a certain charm and charisma in execution of his evil plans. I think the audience really like that because it counteracts the Doctor. And the relationship between the Master and the Doctor has always been so fascinating because it's so steep in history, not only in front of the camera, but also behind the camera too. Especially if you look back at the actors who've taken the role in, in, uh, over the years. And it's a show that totally embraces each new incarnation with such excitement. We did it. Uh, with each era being a historical event of our time, who was your Doctor, I guess the fandom uh, themselves that make both the Doctor and the Master so iconic, by being so warm, welcoming of its new additions. It's why the show continues to thrive generation to generation. Um, can you tease what audiences can expect from the Master and the special in general? There's a line the Master says to the Doctor, this is the day you die. In fact, it's the line that puts both their li uh, lives puts both their lives on the line because the Master has no real control over its outcome. That's interesting. So it's slightly, he's like, just, this is like his, this is basically like his last resort nuclear option. Like he could die. Like, that's an interesting, that's an interesting point that was raised there. So, like, this could be, like, his, like, I don't know, like, his final, so, like, his final plan. Um, the Master will set out his master plan with plenty of room for spontaneity and chaos. He really pushes the dial to its limits because the truth is he has nothing left to lose. Can you tell us any key moments from filming or building friendships over the year? Um, and then he mentions the filming in South Africa, early series 12. Um, can you tell us about a different inc different incarnations of the Master we can expect? Okay, so these are the different characters he was playing. One of the early ideas I had about playing the character was that I didn't want to use prosthetics, if that makes sense. It's what makes the Master so much fun to play. Uh, I get to stick my teeth into so many different characters, and the onus is on me to make them believable and interesting. 
It also keeps the audience on their toes because I never watched them. I never wanted them to feel settled with my incarnation. With the episode in particular, I had early, with this in, with this episode in particular, I had early conversations with Chris Chibnall, each specific version of the master, um, and then worked very closely with our brilliant makeup team and costume designer Ray Holman to create the right look. It does require a lot of attention to detail, not just in how the character looks, but making the performative uh, of each incarnation feels truly and fully formed. There's definitely one incarnation you wouldn't expect, but it has been a long time coming. Interesting. Interesting that they refer to them as incarnations in like a regeneration. Sorry, I'm not saying that the master will regenerate necessarily, but I think that's an interesting, um, an interesting choice of phrasing given the context, I guess, of the episode. What have you done? What are your standout memories of Doctor Who so far? So, uh, Spyfall plane scene. Uh, have you ever been tempted to come back to Doctor Who? I'm in two months. This is actually an interesting question. Have you ever been tempted to come back to Doctor Who? I'm in two minds about coming back. I was nervous about coming back for the centenary special because you offer uh, something and you think, well, maybe I've done as much as I can with it and I don't want it to feel predictable. And with, uh, we see, and, and we end on such an epic finale in the special. Do we need to see him again? But in saying that, Russell C. Davis is an amazing writer and is a beautiful human being too, so who knows? Also, let's not forget, you can put the master on the edge of the universe, but he'll always find a way back again. So yeah, and then he talks a bit about Jodie Wick's legacy, and then we get to jo John Bishop's interview. So yeah, I, I skimmed through that one a bit more because like we've gone through like so much already. You know, we're almost like an hour into this stream already, and I haven't even, you know, got to some of the recent casting uh, discoveries that have been made, so I'm going to be doing that. Also, uh, I want to quick, quickly give a shout out to Chris Pro for his uh, Series 13 documentary. That was class. Uh, go watch that if you haven't already. It's a really interesting, it's a really interesting video. Let's go. Cheers for the retweet, man. No worries. No worries. Uh, yeah, we'll cover John Bishop's segment in a moment, as well as Janet Fielding and Sophie Aldred. Um, and then we'll talk a bit about casting uh, announcements that have been made or casting discoveries, I guess, because I've seen them popping up on Twitter all day. And then, yeah, maybe we'll watch the trailer. I don't know whether I'm going to get claimed for it. Killing it with the hair tonight. It wasn't intentional, to be honest. I mentioned earlier on in the stream... Uh, I got caught in the pouring rain, and this was kind of the result. Uh, but I, I appreciate the compliment, nonetheless. Uh, it was not intentional. Um, yeah, let's read the John Bishop interview. Sorry, I've just been reading a lot. Uh, also, if you are new to the stream, be, be sure to like the stream. Subscribe if you're new. Um, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Yeah, let's get into the John Bishop part. So, oh, oh his bit isn't quite long. I mean, guess that makes sense. This is interesting because we don't know much about Dan's involvement in this story because, like, he's not really been that involved in, like, much of any of it. So, uh, in terms of, like, the promotional trailers and stuff like that. So, what can we expect from Dan in this special? I think at the start, Dan is committed to his time with the Doctor and Yaz. But then there is an incident that makes him question where he really needs to be and what steps he should take. It takes him a little by surprise as well. I am reckoning that's in the bullet train scene. Uh, I reckon he gets... I've, I've said before, and I will say it again... I reckon, this is my theory, now that we know that there's a long pre-credit, my pervading theory right now is that in the opening credits, we will see the um, the Doctor, Yaz and Dan, on this, this big bullet train thing. Um, yeah, I'm regenerating. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing, I'm regenerating. Yeah, no, um, what I'm thinking is, bullet train, speeding through the universe, uh, they land on it, and then, all of a sudden, bam, the Cybermen, Cybermasters invade the train, start shooting at them. Dan almost dies, and is like, hey, you know, this is kind of, like, too much. Because he never really wanted to be, like, a full-time guy. Because he kind of just got dragged along for flux, and then, like, in the last two specials, he kind of um, was like, yeah, I'll come on a couple of adventures. But I think he would probably just, like, um, you know, vibe... Um, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I'm out. It's been fun, but I'm out. Sayonara. See you in a bit. So, yeah, that's what I think is going to happen to him. Villains are playing a huge role in the special. Um, which ones are you looking forward to see? My main interaction is with the Cybermen. See, adding to my theory yet again, I think it's going to be the Cybermen that do him in. 
not kill him, but like, stop him from traveling at least. The strange thing about those monsters in Doctor Who, when you're on set, a lot of them are in prosthetics based. So there's a break you can kind of know the actor within. With the Cybermen, they walk on set, they are scary. They have an aura about them. If I was ever to run into one in a nightclub as a bouncer, I'd think I'd get a Cyberman. That's funny. If I was ever to run a nightclub and I need a bouncer, I'd get a Cyberman. That's funny. Uh, we've seen you wear some pretty stylish, stylish spacesuits. Wearing the spacesuit is a proper set, um, step up. It's something you'd pay to do at a theme park with your mates. You can't think of anything more fun. There's a bit where my nose gets stuck in the helmet. But the real nose wasn't actually big enough to get stuck, so they made a copy of my real nose and then gave it to me. So I stuck my prosthetic nose on my real nose to get it stuck. It's a weird experience to have your nose in your pocket. Okay, see, this is adding to my theory that something's going to go wrong with this space helmet. Um, I think I've... I think I... Because I was saying that a few days ago. I reckon I cracked Dan's thing before... Uh, what was the atmosphere on set? It was definitely emotional. We went out for dinner one night uh, with Jodie Manning and there was a tear shed mainly by me. You don't often get that kind of feeling. You cross paths with people and you hope whatever happens, these people are always in my life. That's a rare thing. Uh, and then he's asked to describe the impact of Jodie's doctor, um, like her legacy about her energy and stuff. Basically a lot of the same things. Um, it might have been... Uh, so yeah, what part of Doctor Who meant... What's Doctor Who meant for you and your active career going forward? It might have given me one or ended it. <laughs> Most personal experiences, me and entertainment, TV shows, unless they've seen me live, live comedy is what I do best at, love the most. TV shows and entertainment um, uh, are entertainment, which means they are... Which, which, they, which means they are there for the moment they're on, and they're entertained fine. They're like candy floss. They're nice while you have them, but they don't fill you up. To be placed in a world like Doctor Who, that's a legacy uh, which will last beyond the moment you're filming it. Uh, for me, that alone makes it worth it. It's a very rare, rare career where you get the opportunity to be on that type of show. You get to do something iconic in Doctor Who, and in 50 years' time, someone will watch those episodes for the first time. Um, that's what being in Doctor Who is, and it's a very special thing. Do you have Doctor Who fans coming to your gigs now? Oh yeah, I have Doctor Who fans coming up to me. Only yesterday I had three different people come up to me, and, and they couldn't uh, have been more different. There's not a stereotypical Doctor Who fan at all. If there was a lineup, and you were to guess who was a Doctor Who fan, I could put those three in there, and you'd never have picked them. Uh, why would why should people watch the Cedar Tidery special? It's a feature-length episode, but it's fast. Something's happening all the time. The Jeopardy is huge. I think Sasha is the master is brilliant. Uh, there's a lot of familiar faces, surprises. I think uh, they are all going to be. They're all going to get the best of what they wanted from Doctor Who. It's like a mega value box of monsters because they're all there. Everyone you've had nightmares about arrives. So yeah, that's a nice interview. It's interesting to hear like his interview because I think that only adds to my like suspicions that he's not a major entity. Who knows? Dan's knows. <laughs> I am looking forward to the spoiler review for you though for you though Stephen I will be in your live chat watching that spoiler review I'm going to be very excited if it's not 19 minutes long like the episode I'm going to riot <laughs> let the hate flow through you Stephen oh Stephen's a legend we, lo we love Stephen in chat everyone chat adds a bit of sex what a legend we love him um, evening Darius hope you're doing good I am I'm just got this regeneration lighting going on because it felt appropriate um do 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 the dark side of youtube is a pathway to many abilities so i'm considered to be a natural that makes me anakin then or it is if you're sheev if you're um palpatine i guess that makes me that makes me uh anakin which i'll take you know <laughs> i'll take that uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> interview Janet Fielding. <clears throat> uh, was it difficult to make the decision to come back to Doctor Who? It took me, oh, it must have took me a whole 30 seconds to think, yeah, I would be interested. Uh, but I didn't anticipate that it would be anything other than a tiny cameo. I just assumed that's what it would be, and it wasn't. Can you tell me about your discussions with Chris Jimmel and coming back? And he said, and the, she says, uh, we had a phone, we, well, he phoned me up, we had a long chat. And I said, I thought Tegan would be some sort of social campaigner. 
that I saw her getting involved in social issues and that amongst them would be environment and, compa and campaigning. I thought she'd probably have a couple of divorces behind her and that she'd have adopted a child because that would be an environmental thing for her to do. Okay, interesting. Was it... That kind of deconfirms um, Tegan and Nyssa. Basically, uh, the thing introduced by Russell T. Davis in um, uh, Farewell, uh, Sarah J Yeah, Sheev Palpatine. Big old, big old Sheev. Big old, big old... Uh, that's what I call it. I call it Sheev. Yeah, I'm, th I'm honestly thinking, though, with, with they said... Um, uh, a few divorces, like, basically the whole idea of Tegan and Nyssa being a couple, I think, is pretty pretty unlikely now, if the couple marriages behind her is anything to go by. Unless, of course, you know, she's, um, bi, which she could always be, or all her marriages were to women, but I, I, the way that's phrased makes me doubtful, but that's a thing. Uh, but yes, anyway, um, Uh, was it challenging getting back to character Tegan again? I do big finish all your dramas, so I'm still often in the headspace anyway. Usually it's back in time and not Tegan having moved on. I'm nearly 70, so it's slightly different. It's Tegan not having left the world of Doctor Who. It's not... It's Tegan not having left the world of Doctor Who. It's Tegan before she walks out the door, which I did in 1984. Uh, was it hard keeping a return secret, and how did you feel about the reaction? I found the secret quite difficult because... People are always used to be doing Blu-ray extras and doing the Obit filming at fan conventions. So I basically told people that I was doing Blu-ray extras, just I seem to be doing more Blu-ray extras than normal. And an awfully concentrated set of them, so that's quite funny. So, where are you filming? People make conversation. I made the mistake of saying Carly to a friend. She instantly guessed I'd be doing, uh, I've been going away so often. She's a really good friend and I told her, if you tell anybody, I'll have to kill you. And she did keep the secret. One of the hard things, um... Uh, we, uh, if you tell uh, one of the hard things was how uh, do you get people to run lines because you need somebody to run lines with you was that aspect of getting back to character quite nerve wracking in terms of learning etc it's a bit like driving, it's an act of coordination and so you have to uh, find the rhythm of it. and so it took me a little bit, like a few days to get back into the rhythm of it uh, things like remembering the lines once upon a time, it wasn't really a problem now it's not as easy because it was as it was because I'm not used to it. The response was just amazing to him. To hearing that you were coming back, was there anything that stood out to you? I was gobsmacked. Everybody sort of said, "Oh my god!" I screamed when I saw you and Sophie Audrey in the trailer, and you go, "Really?" They were so excited. Christopher and Russell T Davis both warned me and reached out to say it will be incredible. It was truly an overwhelming the number of tweets that night. And then, of course, all the newspapers picked up on it, and all the online editions had it in the story. I sent it off to my brothers in Australia. Oh, that's nice. Can you talk a bit about your involvement with the villains on sale? I've got such sympathy for Patrick O'Kane, the lead Cyberman Ashad. He is absolutely terrifying to look at. He emanates really serious menace. He's a very big man anyway, but he was also so terrific. Because the seats together, uh, we would sit and wait at the breakout area. And I thought, oh god, how uncomfortable would that be? And then Sasha, Sasha is good as the master, so menacing. I'd use the words unhinge. He's very unpredictable as the master. He's very alarming. And for that reason, it's a brilliant performance. Did you have input into Tegan's costume? Interesting question. Um, I went to meet with Raymond Holman before we started filming. He's very clever, Ray. And he's also lovely. What a lovely team. I sort of said uh, what I thought, given that her story is now that she's developed developed and he had put together what he thought we didn't even have to keep uh, to go looking he said a photograph of the jacket coat as soon as i put it on i thought yep yeah, absolutely love it uh, how would you just describe where we find tegan and special the former companions who are on earth get in contact with each other so yeah this is another interesting point i heard rumors a long long ago about a um a companion support group of sorts uh basically and that seems to be what's happening here. And the interesting thing as well is that she makes reference to the companions, which implies that there will be more cameos than necessarily what we were expecting with um, um, with Ace and Tegan, perhaps. I still think William Russell might have like a Skype star cameo.
What is this article from? This is at the BBC's press release for Power of the Doctor. There's like interviews with everyone. And uh, we've also covered all the images that they've released. I don't think I've missed any currently. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look to me like the, the tissue ship is happening. Um, but yeah, how would you describe where we find Tegan and Special? The former companions uh, are in contact with each other, so yeah, that's what I said about the support group thing. She and Ace know that something is happening and that the activity is unlikely to be alien, is likely to be alien and they're investigating. Did you enjoy working with Sophie Aldred? Of course. How could you not enjoy working with Sophie? She's the loveliest person. Uh, did you feel Special be part of Jodie's final episode? It felt hugely special, the first female Doctor in a really exciting story. Also, I'll be there for another Doctor's regeneration. It's the second time that happened. No, the first time was Tom Bacon regenerating to Peter Davison, uh, Tegan's first story, Legopolis. How would you describe Tegan? She takes no nonsense and she's assertive, and a lot of female characters of that time were. I'd, I'd be so nice to have you in your drawing room, whereas Tegan would be more likely to challenge you and think, Oh, really? You think that? Tell me why. And then finally, we have the interview with perhaps uh, one of my favourite um, contributors to uh, Doctor of all time, Sophie Aldred. I uh, did, did a podcast with him many moons ago. Very cool. Well, Ace doesn't have K9 as far as we've seen. So maybe that takes place later. That's true, yeah. I think they are playing a bit fast and loose with the extended continuity given the... I don't think the Tissa thing is happening either. The Tegan Nissa thing. There is a rumour that William Russell recorded a scene where he speaks on the telephone to someone. There is. And I, the way they describe that like companion meeting makes me think that is real. I'm just going to say that now. I don't, I don't have a basis for that other than my own guesses, but I think that's that's real. The thing is, though, the, the thing is with Caroline Ford is she's her character. The difficulty with bringing her back in the scenario where they, they all have a call together is that she was dumped on what? 21... Oh, what's the year? Is it 2164 or 2165? One of the two, isn't it? It's like, she probably wouldn't be able to do the Skype call unless there was some time travel she had against, which I guess they could do. Um, the fan part of my brain where it said, I'd love to see Joe Grant or maybe, well, uh, maybe Ian. The rational part of my brain is like, there's already enough of this episode trying to handle more companions. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you could just have them in, like, bit parts, I guess. But yeah. Tegan worked for the Joe Grant Relief Fund. What in the centenary? Is that confirmed? I know that they say about her um, championing uh, different causes. So yeah, if that's the case, that makes sense. That does make a bit of sense. And then it says, can you tell us uh, about the callback to come back and be part of the centenary special? I'll never forget where I was. I was uh, in the conservatory in my house and I'd got the call from the agent who said Andy Pryor, who's casting director on Doctor Who, has been in touch. Uh, and you know what that means. I put my I put on the phone and burst into tears. The call I didn't realise I'd be waiting for all these years. The next thing that happened, I was in a Zoom call with Chris Jibble where he asked me if I would do the great honour and privilege of being in the BBC Centenary episode. I said, wild horses wouldn't stop me. That was it. I love Sophie Aldridge's energy, man. What were your first impressions of getting that script, and what were you most excited about? There are particular things that happens which I couldn't believe Chris put in, because it calls back to something I did 30 years ago. To do that again was just incredible. I was really, really lucky that I was a companion as I met the Dalek Cybermen and the Master. I was really excited to meet and be behind the scenes with Jodie Amanda, and it was a thrill to be in the TARDIS. What was I most excited about? All of it. <laughs> were there any differences uh, in being on set? Uh, was the family feeling always there. The family feeling was completely the same, run by Jodie. That was totally her. It was incredible. The banter, the jokes, also the hard work, ethic, having fun, everyone cast and crew production. It was lovely, the relationship between Jodie and Vandip. It reminded me of how it was with Sylvester McCoy and me. The same close friendship, which I'm sure will be with me for life. Like, my, with me, will be with them for life. Like, with, with mine and Sylv. Uh, with Sylv. Uh, it, I think the only thing that was very different was not rehearsing like we used to, uh, to have two at BBC in North Acton, and COVID of course, everything was in, everyone was in masks, it was quite weird because wonderful makeup artist in India was wearing a mask, and when I saw her without it, I had no idea who she was. Um, uh, how, 
has it changed uh, when you've been to conventions? The conventions that I love most are the small ones, with about a couple of hundred fans. That's like a family, really. That's not changed. Although people are incredibly excited and always tell me how they screamed and shouted and jumped off the sofa when they saw the trailer. As for the bigger car cults, my queue for ones recently was all day long, and I didn't stop. I never had that. Not even when we were doing the original series. Demographic-wise, there is also a younger woman who have fallen in love with the series by a journey, now who have gone back and watched the classics, and that they can relate to the character of Ace. They love the realism, her, her feistiness, her wearing her heart on her sleeve, and she speaks to them. How difficult was it to get into back into Ace's skin on set? Uh, in Big Finish and other audios and spin-offs, I'm usually playing younger Ace, uh, probably up to age 30. So certainly to play middle-aged Ace, I'd had a chance to think about how she'd be and um, how she'd be with the Doctor through other projects like Torchwood Audios, the Blu-ray box, etc. trailer. It doesn't uh, take her very long to get back to this youthful frame of mind. Can you tell us how you prepared for Ace's stunts? Um, I, I hear you're looking forward to that side of things. I was talking to Janet Fielding in one of our breaks, and I said Chris had asked me what I'd like to do. I wanted to show the middle-aged women have still got it. We can fit in and be at, we we can be fit and active if we choose to do so. And um, the same stuff. And I said uh, to him, I'd love to do what I used to do. Janet said several expletives, laughs, uh, because of course she had to chase me around the, up the stairs, run around, and do all of that as well. I think she was secretly pleased. Uh, did you strike up a bond with the cast? And she mentioned uh, Jodie Bandit's bond earlier. Uh, she was also delighted to, to have one with Gemma Redgrave. Um, uh, they are planning a meeting together, apparently, with Gemma, um, Janet, and Sophie. That's a fun meeting. How was the atmosphere on set? It was a bit sweet. We went uh, there the day of the last scene to speak, but I know there were lots of tears shed. I said to the crew, Goss, you're going to miss this. It was a really solid group of people who loved each other's company and working together. There was no hierarchy. Have you followed Jodie's Doctor throughout her tenure? Yes, I have. I think it's really important that she brought whole new demographics to show to the fandom. That's her legacy. It's bringing that young female audience to Doctor Who. Uh, there are a lot of villains in the episode. Uh, are there any that... Uh, can you tease the audience about what they're going to expect? I was thrilled to watch Sasha the Master in action. I think he's a genius. And he's so like that. He's so not like that in real life. Yeah, basically, the Master talked about Patrick O'Kane as well. And that wraps up the Sophie Aldrin interview. Um, I basically read most of that, but obviously, if you want to uh, read it yourselves, feel free to in chat. Um, thank you to Cameron Jefferson for the two pound super chat. Do you think we'll see past Dr. Sylvester McCoy? I could see a regeneration flash, Very, I could see that. Hello, Paula. Uh, hello, Crispy. I'm so excited for this episode. I was just saying earlier how much I love Deal Series 13 video, dude. Great job. Uh, I'm going to turn off this regeneration lighting now. <laughs> it's getting a bit taxing on my eyes. Bap. And bap. Boom. Look at how fancy I am. There we are. I mean, yeah, it would be nice to do probably play the first Doctor. I mean, yeah, they could definitely do that. I could see them, like, doing a Flash thing. I'm also excited for this episode, you know? I'm, I'm interested to see what they do. But above anything, I'm really excited to see Ace again. I'm just, I just want to see Ace. Oh, is this finally stop regenerating? I've done a ten and I've done a meta crisis. Um, someone asked me um, on Twitter, which I will answer. Hello, what are some figures that you'd love to see for Jodie's era that they haven't done? Okay, Master, Fugitive, any of the monsters. So, specifically New Slide Man Design, also I want some Revelation Daleks. There you go. Question done. Bam. Uh, there's also, there's something else I want to talk about. Oh yes, the castings. The castings, I think, was the, the main thing. Uh, yes, yeah, so we've gone over basically everything for that interview now. I think now it's just the the main the main bits that I'm that I'm gonna get. Uh, you can tell sometimes I don't always have things up on time. Not a fan of this incarnation there. Where's your extra limb then? You can't see it. I've actually got three legs now, but I'm not gonna show you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. 
Tari's doesn't. Tari's Tardis doesn't appear to have regenerated at all. Uh, Stunner Peter Capaldi. Stunner about to be Peter Capaldi. I might change the lighting every now and again. Will thirteen say I don't want to go? I doubt it. I doubt that will be her final lines. Um, but I reckon I reckon her final lines would be interesting. You've definitely gone grey. Has that made regeneration or something? Gone grey? I'm 19. I bloody hope I haven't gone grey. <laughs> I hope I haven't. Am I, am I aging? Is this death? It's just just like Smith in Time of the Doctor. Just... This is where I end up. This face. This version of me. 16k now, Tarrant. Is it at 16k? Um, are we at it? Yes, we are. I'm, I'm a little bit dubious to celebrate because it went back down last time. So I'm going to just say a tentative thank you and make sure you keep subscribing if you haven't already just so that, you know, it stays there. Um, um, what's next? What's next? What's next? Yes, the casting stuff. Sorry, I forgot where I was. Mate, I'm 25, almost 26, and I've got grey hair. So is that what I've got to look forward to, is it? That's reassuring. Uh, no offense to you, because you're not going grey, mate. Thank you, Michael. At least someone believes. Someone believes in me. <laughs> no. Um, all jokes aside, yeah, what am I looking for? Why can't I find it? Aha, here we go. So, yeah, there were some additional cast members that were discovered. Um, such as uh, Ryan Dempsey. Uh, Dempsey plays Nicholas, likely Emperor Nicholas II of Russia. So that's to do with the Rasputin plot. We had Emma Anderson. Uh, Emma Anderson plays Alexandra, Empress of Russia. Um, Alex, Empress Alexandra of Russia. Uh, Sanchia McCormack. I feel like I'm, I'm messing that up. McCormack plays Train Marshal Haylaz, likely on the bullet train. Makes sense. Joe Sims plays Deputy Marshal Arnost. Arnhost. I won't miss Chibnall's names. I'm going to be really honest. Like, what is Marshall Arnhost? Alas, just make some <laughs> names that people remember. Uh, Danielle Bajelic. Uh, Bajelic plays a curator, likely in the Museum of Ace Visits. Um, and then Joe Slovic. Uh, Slovic plays a messenger. So there you go. There's the casting stuff. Yeah, Hazlack and Arnhost, like, come on, give me, give me, like, why, why is no one ever called Dave, you know what I mean? How are you doing, Terry? Thank you, Simon Ashley, for the 10 pound, the 10 the 5 pound super chat, sorry, I, I, I misread that. Um, you're not going great, just make sure to apply the hair dye better next time, right, you're giving me a complex about this, <laughs> no, um, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, like I said, I was just in town today, uh, went, did a little bit of looking around. Um, sort of got soaking wet, my chair almost died, but it was a fun day. Um, watched some Torchwood, um, it was, and uh, some half of it was a good time with a friend. <laughs> We're lucky Dan isn't called Darin Skubok. Yeah, he does do weird names. My favourite is probably like the ones in Battle Around Score Around Carlos, where it's like even I mean even that name in itself is funny. But um Oh wait, this is I I missed this bit. I missed I feel like I did I miss this? Wait, I just can mention what the regeneration looks like. I just went through that whole article and I dead ass didn't see that. Hold on. Where is this? Um. I swear I just went through that whole article. I'll tell you what, I'll just read it on Twitter because uh, William Who's comprised it for me. <laughs> It just says, uh, it is different. It's very visual. It's visually very different. Where it takes place is different. I think I can say with it without a doubt, 
Without being too much spoiler, it feels different. It's not going to take place in the same place as recent regenerations. Yeah, it was confirmed a while ago that this one isn't taking place in the TARDIS, which is a change that I'm actually very much in favour of. I think uh, it's nice to give the TARDIS a break, quite frankly, from all the explosions. I think that's nice. Um, good, good for the TARDIS. I'm strumming up, so yeah, those were the names that I always found funny. Because they, they just seem like such weird names. Like, how did he even come up with those? It was just so random. But we, but we love it, you know, we love it. Um, Shibla really heard the Romana Veranda Lunder joke in Classic here and took it seriously and used it as a regen and use it for inspiration for every character's name. Yeah, it just kind of feel like that. Patek versus Adipose, who would win? Realistically, it probably would be the Patek. Like, what's an Adipose realistically going to do? Like, what do you call it? The, the Patek has teeth that can eat for everything. I, should I post, should I play the trailer? I'll tell you what, I'll play it in windowed mode. Hopefully they won't claim me. I mean, it is a trailer, and we were all right last time. This might be the famous last word, so if the, if the, if the channel goes down, it's... Uh, is your local uh, HMV Queen Street? It is. Yes. Um, have they fixed the Immortal Snowman DVD cover? Was there something wrong with the original hurt? DVD cover, what is your favourite song? I'm going to be really boring and say Bora. I just, I rock out to that song in the car regularly. Uh, so there you go, Ben Delaney. Um, what was I going to do? Yes, the trailer. So this was like a... Ah! No, no, stop playing it yet. Let me make sure my volume levels are good. Or the desktop audio. I'm, I'm coping I don't get claimed. Also, I think, speaking of audio levels, I might turn myself down a little bit. There we go. Just so I'm not peaking. I'm not peaking quite as much um because i like to make sure that my voice is nice and nice and clean for you all you know nice and anyway <laughs> I, you might see i got a bit like cuckoo kachoo recently because i've been i've been out all day and then be streaming so I'm, I'm knackered to be honest but yeah um hopefully i don't get claimed for this it is a trailer so i should be fine Uh, so yeah, this is basically a collation of like every, you know, um, like of the era, and then we get a couple of shots of Power of the Doctor at the end. It's a, just a well edited trailer. Yeah, this is like obviously collation. So you get Revolution Shorts, Legend of Sea Devils. I'm pausing it just to make sure I don't get claimed and talking over it so I don't get claimed. Please don't claim this, BBC. I love that they included the lockdown thing. I have seen this before, by the way, but I just thought I'd show you guys. I like the music in the background. I like the, the guy who edited this um, did a really good job. I want more. More of the universe. What time with you? You never told her. Told her what? How you feel about it. I wish. What a universe. What a planet. Stunning. I wish this would go on forever. Hello, Doctor. Welcome to the end of your existence. Nothing so then this is Power of the Doctor combined with other bits. But yeah. Yeah, those eyes, just to show, because I know that like a lot of people thought they were that there was a new shot. I think it is just the time of child shot again, but with like a filter over it. I'm pretty sure. I don't want it to end. I will not let you die because of decisions I've taken. I'm with you, whatever happens. I'm taking a big risk showing that because of uh, copyright and everything, but I should be okay. Joker's hardest moment. Uh, no side of Captain Jack. Oh yeah, you won't get Captain Jack won't be in this episode. 
Yeah, the show does look good. This makes it look better than it was. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of issues with the era, but I think this trailer was cool. Um... Um, Chibnall, don't press the button, please. BBC, please, don't claim me, I beg of you. I beg of you, I need to feed my children. I, that's a lie, I don't have kids, or do I? You don't know. Uh, is there anything major else that I need to cover? Oh, there's a new Shooty Gower article. All right. I haven't read this, so let's go. Uh, Jodie Whittaker, Shooty Gower will take Doctor Who to new, new audiences. Uh, Sex Education Star was announced as the fourth Doctor in May. Uh, Jodie Whittaker said Shooty Gower will be magical on Doctor Who and will reach audiences that it has not been able to. The 40-year-old British actress um, has played the 13th incarnation of the Doctor since 2017, and she took over the Octopi Capaldi. Speaking of ahead of her final feature like special, The Power of the Doctor, airing next week, Whittaker said, this family grows, and it will be bigger than us, and it will go on, and Shooty will be extraordinary, and it will bring an audience that we haven't reached. Performance will be so magical. Now we get to sit back and enjoy it as the fans, not knowing what comes next, and being a part of that. Um... Uh, and um, when asked to share some advice uh, for a successor, which said, it's yours for the taking, there's no advice you can give. I'm certainly not giving a phenomenal actor any advice, he doesn't need it from me. Just own it, it's yours, he's earned it. And I think this is mostly just quotes we've seen before. Uh, so yeah, that's interesting. It's always nice to see the, the outgoing Doctor. Wait, there's more Darius. Was I on screen twice? Wait, what happened then? Yeah, that article is a bit bad. Oh, right. Oh, because I said about kids, yeah. <laughs> Darius daddy moment. Oh, that's weird. Um, yes, no, I can say I don't actually. Do 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 Yeah, okay, I think that's all of it. Sorry, I just zoned out for a sec. Uh thank you all for tuning in once again. Um uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, um, do all that beautiful business. Um I will likely see you tomorrow for some form of content. Um as we get ever closer to Power of the Doctor. Thank you all for tuning in. It's very late, so I'm s i am i my my battery's gone. Dude, you look tired. Get some sleep. Yeah, I am heading out. Don't worry, I'm heading out. I'm going to be fine. It's just going to be really busy today. But thank you all for tuning in. Please like, comment, subscribe, anything like that. And I'll see you in the next stream or video in general. Have an awesome rest of your day. Take care. Thank you and goodbye.